We're here at Carleton University for the EU Strategic Partnerships Workshop. And it's my pleasure to be with Dr. Mishito Suroka. He's a senior research fellow at the Nas National Institute for Defense Studies in Tokyo. Thanks very much for being with us. Thank you very much. Why, in your view, has the EU designated Japan as a strategic partner? Um, I think it is just natural for the EU to designate Japan as a strategic partner because so Japan is part of G7. Japan is still the third largest economy in the world. And uh, EU and Japan share values. And uh, so I think it's just natural. Hmm. And what, what are the current issues in the EU-Japan partnership? Um, the EU and Japan are now negotiating two agreements. One is free trade agreement, FTA, and the other one is a political agreement, which is now called a strategic partnership agreement. So w we, we started these negotiations um, in 2013. So we are still, in, 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 in s still negotiating, and uh, I, I have no idea when we can conclude this ag uh, agreement, but still, but, but uh, it's really important for, for the two partners to, 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 to conclude this agreement. What, from the perspective of Japan, why is the EU seen as an important partner? Um, the EU is, is actually a very big economic power, and that's for sure. And uh, the trade and investment relationship between the EU and Japan is quite, quite huge. And, uh, and also increasingly in political and security terms as well. The, the for, for example, the w one of the newest developments is, is defense cooperation between the EU and Japan. So in the context of counter piracy, in the coast of Somalia, off the coast of Somalia, in the Gulf of Aden, and, uh, we have already conducted uh, the two joint exercises between the Japanese vessels and uh, the, the European vessels in the context of uh, the EU NAB4, the, the anti uh, anti-piracy operation of the year. So that, that, that is a really new thing. And uh, so, so there are an increasing number of various uh, uh, and examples of, of cooperation between the two sides. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What kind of role does Japan want to see the European Union and European member states play in the Asia-Pacific region? Um, and first, uh, it, it is quite true that uh, Europe, first and foremost, is an economic power. So economic profile in Asia, European economic profile in Asia, I I I is already quite established and huge. And, uh, but uh, the, the, uh, I think uh, one of the things that uh, we now think more about is uh, how the EU can use that economic power base for other purposes. I mean, the, how you can use economic power for political engagement. So the, that's, of course, that's something for the EU to decide how it wants to use its economic power. But at the same time, the, the another aspect of this is that uh, the, even if it's for the EU, it's just an economic issue, but uh, the, because of the EU's huge presence and huge profile, it inevitably have political security and other implications. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the, I think the Europeans need to, 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 be, to be fully aware of that. Mm -hmm. Might be unintended implications or consequences coming from the EU's economic thinking or economic decisions. And that, 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 that's, it. That's, that's really we, we have to think about. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and also the political and the security engagements as well. So some people say that, uh, that because the EU is not willing or capable of playing a direct military role in Asia, it, it is not a strategic actor. Some people argue that way, but uh, I don't really think so because they, we are not, in Asia, we are not really fighting war. So the, what we expect Europe to do is more political engagement rather than military mm -hmm, engagement. Mm -hmm. What would this political engagement look like? Um, I think the, what is important is the principles and uh, how the EU or Europeans can stick to its own principles, like the rule of law and uh, the, the resolution of conflict by peaceful means, uh, freedom of navigation, and uh, no change of status, status quo by force or coercion. And these are important principles mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. Europe needs to, to, to stand. In case there are some tensions in the region between the powers. Sure, yeah. sure, yes. Uh, what are some of the challenges facing this strategic partnership? Um, there are various um, challenges. And uh, one, one is that uh, the not many people, both in 
on the European side and the Japanese side, not many people know what the two partners are doing. But in fact, on the ground, there have been various cooperation take, already taking place, but people don't know. And because people don't know, they tend to, get, tend to become skeptical mm -hmm. about the, the potential and the prospect of the relationship. So I think that, 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 that's something that we need to change. So that's why we, we, we need more public diplomacy efforts in raising people's awareness about 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 the about the the relationship and uh, the 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 things that have already been taking place between the two sides and that that is one thing and uh, the another thing that uh, we need to think about is to what extent we need to institutionalize this relationship so that as i said that now the eu and japan are negotiating the the fta and the strategic partnership agreement and uh, the there are some other ideas for, 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 for institutional uh, foundations between the two, like the, the comprehensive uh, participation agreement, which is about Japan's participation in CSDP, the Common, Funds, uh, Common Security and Defense Policy Operations and Missions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, that, so, so th there are various possibilities. Mm -hmm. We heard in the presentations earlier that the European Union is a lot of its attentions on its own borders right now, the eastern and northern borders, and China and the EU are also uh, increasing their relations. So where does Japan fit in this, in this uh, trying to continue getting the support, uh, the attention of the European Union? Yes, the, it's, I've come to understand that now it's very difficult time for Europeans to maintain its it, their, their interest in Asia because um, the Ukraine and the Middle East and they are too busy in dealing with those problems. But uh, the fact will not change. The fact is that uh, the, the what takes place in Asia is going to have more direct impact on European not only prosperity but also European security as well. So this increasing connectivity between European security theater and the Asian security theater it is it's a reality. So the whether Europeans like it or not, that's a reality and that's going to continue. So that's why the Europe cannot afford ignoring uh, Asian issues. And uh, the, the, as I said, the, the, the another challenge is that how Europe and how the European Union can link strategic par its strategic partnership with Japan with other strategic partnerships and wider regional engagement mm -hmm. in the Asia Pacific region. Mm -hmm. So the Japan EU, China EU, South Korea EU, and EU's relations with ASEAN. So the, and, and, and of course the EU is a member of the ARF, the ASEAN Regional Forum. So how the EU can make a comprehensive broader picture about Asia, not just focusing on have and spoke type, the series of uh, bilateral relationships with individual countries. And uh, that, that, that's, that's, I think, a very an important but difficult challenge for the European Union. Mm -hmm. Dr. Soroka, I just want to thank you very much for your time and for being with us. Enjoy the conference. Thank you very much. Thank you.